Hi folks, Jason here. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to use image planes and basically turn them into models using the loop cut uh, tool and some other bits and bobs and uh, to basically create a scene like this. So you can see here, I've got this um, uh, sort of little model here that I've kind of created. I've not done a roof, but basically just created this little scene, put a bit of a road on there and uh, I've extruded out some of these bits and bobs. I've looped it on the other side, so it's basically the same photograph. So what I worked from was uh, this photograph here, uh, Princeton University Store. You could choose anything. I can make this uh, available for you um, on Discord and, uh, and on YouTube as well. The results are pretty cool, really, for doing things like quick concepting. You can get some characters in there. You could really have some fun playing around with this and just to get ideas together to get models together as far as i know you know you can you can sort of save all this and export it as an fbx put it into a game engine as well um the choice is yours but in terms of sort of creating a quick scene you can even sort of create a little street scene with it so uh, but we're just going to stick with one building for now so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to save this out I'm going to start afresh. So I'm going to go to New, General. I'm just going to get rid of the cube. Hit Delete. And uh, things like the, uh, we'll keep the cursor there. Uh, maybe just move this light to one side. And uh, ditto with the camera. All right. So first of all, I'm going to go into the orthographic view. So you'll need to obviously download the image before you get to get going. Going to look at the, um, well, ultimately going to bring it into the front view. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to File, Import, and, uh, oh, it's not there. Oh, there it is, yeah. Images as planes. Now, if you don't see it, what you'll need to do is you'll need to go to Edit, Preferences, and where it says Add-ons, you'll need to just type in Image. Yeah, and to say that import, export, import images as plain. So you will need that or else you won't see anything. So go to file, import, and there we go, uh, images as planes. And then I'm going to go into the desktop. I'm going to go and find the photo, which I think is, that's the one there. And then go import images as planes. Let's put it in the uh, in the different view for some reason. So. I'm just going to scale it up for now. Around about there. And let's just have a little rotate around. I can't see anything at the moment because we need it in the um, rendered view, in the, um, give it the correct title, viewport shading view. Uh, it's flipped it for some reason. So let's just um, go back a second. There we go. So we've got a proper view of it there. And I'll just go and scale that up. And then I'm just going to use these buttons here just to rotate like so. Now you can use the orthographic views to kind of be, get this a bit more precise, something like that. And let's just make sure we're in the right view. So that's the front view. That's all looking good. You can use this top button here to just bring that up to, say, there. And shift key just to kind of lower it. So. That's all looking good. Now, if you have an issue with this in terms of it's slightly translucent, because I had an issue with this, <clears throat> you can go down to, just give me a second. So if you go down to the materials um, uh, here and scroll down, You'll see there it's in blend mode alpha blend, right? Um, alpha alpha clip is the one that I've tended to have it in so it isn't translucent. Now that seems to be fine at the moment, but uh, if it's in alpha blend, you may find it as a translucent. You can see there, you can actually see through the grid. Whereas if you go in alpha clip, it tends to take that out. Yeah, so just to save you a headache. Right, and so we're pretty much ready to kind of get going and start, um, you know, uh, getting this to look something more like a, a building. 
So we'll start off by uh, doing a bit of cropping here. So we don't need to get into the UV editor straight away. So what I'm going to do is just to kind of crop this in so you haven't got like, the other part of the building in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edit mode and then make sure you're on edge mode there. We're going to need to hit the G key twice, double tap, and then bring it in. Yeah. So if you try and actually bring it in, it's just going to squash the image. Yeah. So we'll do the same thing on the other side. Click. And then double tap on the G and then bring that in line. So do the same on this side. Double G, bring that down. So we've got to start that. So that's all looking good. Now we can play around with this a little bit if you want, if you want to kind of just select that. And bring that up a bit. But we are going to sort of play around with this. We're going to need to kind of deal with this issue here but that'll, that'll be a little bit later okay so we're ready to start using the loop cut tool so what i'm going to do here is you can go down now if you you click on the little icon it'll just keep using it until you stop using it so this might be a preferable way so you can literally just start by kind of going okay i'm gonna uh, say click and hold and maybe start on the windows right so I can do maybe go there and then we could do that again if you wanted to you can maybe do that again like that so this is one way you can do it another way you can do it is control R yeah but this way at least whilst we're on this button this work kind of works for me but it's whatever whatever works for you so I'm just going to work on actually doing these windows it's not going to be perfect because this isn't like a full a full view of the um, of the building as it were it's not straight on there's a slight angle to it okay let's do these top ones and then we've got the window sills as well now you can still maneuver these we'll come to that in a minute you know do bits of tweaking but uh, We'll just get the basics in for now. We've got the doorways, so we've got so we've got a bit of a ledge there as well. So we'll have a look at that, like so. And we've got this doorway here. We're looking at this area here. Again, we're going to bring that forward like that, and then when you're doing, um, if I just zoom in a little bit, if you're going to try and like bring a line in and then take it to the edge. It won't do that. It's going to fall within the parameters. So if you're going to do this edge here, you're not going to be able to do it from there. Yeah. So take it there and then bring it in like so. Yeah. Same thing with the other side here. Bring that in like so. And we can have a look at doing this doorway. We've already got the top of that actually, so that's that's looking all right. And then we just got the bottom like so and we've got like a bit of a window going on here maybe we can just bring one there like so and i think we've got an edge there so i think that's kind of looking all right now there's some in-betweens and like say that these are like sash windows you can put all this kind of detail in here but i want to make this as, as sort of short as possible this video so um i'm just really doing the basics if you want to kind of like put more detail in there you know you're welcome to do that Let's have a look at tweaking now. So I should use the shift, shift key now and uh, have a look at this and just go to the select tool. You can select these lines or double click them and move them. Now you will need to make sure though, you see that there, we've got the, um, we've got the dragging going on, right? Okay, so that's not going to work. So what we'll need to do again is just go double G and then it'll allow us to go and select it. Yeah, so just something to remember again just to save you a headache so anything where you can see you can double click go in that line then just double g and then we can just sort of maneuver it just so it's in in line but again this is for you to kind of play around with but i think that's pretty much looking all right i'm just looking at like stuff like the doorway here double g but i think that's pretty much it And oh, there's a bit of a, a, a put another line in there. Let's have a go at 
This time we'll just go control and R. And just make sure we get this uh, in the other, other area here. So I'm going to bring my cursor down. There we go. Let's make sure it's in the area. Let's bring that down to that say there. And then ditto with this control and R. Just that doorway. All right, we'll see how we get on. So hopefully you've been able to do that okay. And then we're going to go into the next stage, which is extruding the faces. So we're going to start extruding the faces, and I'm going to do this by perhaps it would be helpful to maybe just have a look at getting it into the more perspective view. And we can certainly do a few things, like for example, maybe I can drop another loop in there actually, just to so we can bring this forward. Like so, maybe just a little bit, not a lot. And then once you've done that and you're ready to start extruding, we can start to um, you know start selecting the faces i'm just going to go onto the edge here though i'm just going to double click that and hit double g and just bring that in a bit as well it's needed a bit of a trim same thing with this other side as well double g like so right then i'm going to go to the top here and select faces and let's have a go at just selecting these now so i'm just holding down shift and just selecting these like so and then just going to hit e just bring it forward now in reality it's it's this is like a this is what we call that molding um they're not going to be sticking that far out it's you know in reality you're probably talking like maybe four or five inches you know it's not going to be a huge amount so i'm going to bring that forward and let's have a look at the windows now. So we're going to look at bringing the windows back. So extruding them back. So again, I'm going to select, just select these faces, shift, just selecting them all. It's best to do them all in one go, just so you've got them more uniform. And just rotate around and hit E, and then just take it back like so. Nice and simple. And then we've got these window ledgers. So let's have a look at these. Again, just holding down shift, selecting these. Like so. Hit E. And then bring that out. Like so. Not too much. Remember, in reality, it's probably going to be about what? Six inches? Or maybe, yeah, six six to ten inches something like that all right now you will notice we've got some stretching going on here what they call stretching so we've got like the photograph and it all looks nice and then we've brought these out and we kind of got the streaks going on there don't worry about that we're going to take care of that a little bit later let's just to concentrate on getting the rest of this done so um let's have a look at so we've got this little kind of again this bit of molding here that we can have a look at like so, and then hit E, and we'll bring that out like so. Not a lot, just a little bit, yeah. If you want to do things like, if you want to start being a little bit fancy and start doing things like bevels, you can do that if you want. Got a little bevel function there, if you want to kind of put a little bit of a, again, just be careful when you're doing this because it's quite sensitive. But you can maybe do something like that on there, okay. Let's have a look at uh, this other one here. I might just drop a little bit of a kind of sort of um, almost like a sort of lintel. I'm not sure what it is. This might be just a kind of like a covering for the over the window. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I might possibly leave that because it looks like it might be one of those kind of umbrella things that kind of comes out. So again, you could sort of model that. Other than that, let's have a look at the doorway. Okay, and we're going to go to the move tool, hit E, and we'll just take that back a little bit, like so. In fact, I think I just missed one there. Let's do that again. Hit E, 
Let me just take that back. That's going to go back a little bit further, probably around about three feet in reality. Something like that. Okay, so you've got a bit of depth going on there. And then you've got these windows, you know, the shop window here again, shift select. Again, I've not bothered with the the actual um might just put an edge loop in there actually. Let's come back to that. Um, you know, the actual wooden frame. But you again you can play around with that if you like. I'm just going to press control and R if it lets me. There we go. Has it got it? There we go. And then just going to I need to get it in the um, to get it in the space so i'll just try that again so it can be a little bit tricky this you need to kind of get the cursor within the area and once you've done that then you can kind of select it and then click all right let's try that again i'm going to go back to the face shift and select all of these and this is going to be our shop window and we're just going to extrude this back so again i'm just going to move that around e and just send that back again. We've got that kind of horrible stretching going on, but we are going to remedy that. That's fine. And then we've got this bit of a doorway as well. Maybe we can uh, just drop an edge loop in there. Like so. And I might have to drop another one in there, I think. Round right about there. Like so. And again, it's going to go select the faces, click on it, shift, and then just select them all like so. Okay, maybe select these ones as well at the bottom. And then E, and then we'll just send that back. And then, um, yeah, what I was going to do is click on that and then we can maybe have extrude these out perhaps we'll see how we get on anyway okay so we've got the kind of the the basic sort of structure in there and now we've done that, we're kind of ready to uh, start having to play around with the smart UVs. So, uh, yeah, give yourself a bit of time. Uh, take your time with it. And uh, in the next part, we're going to be looking at um, how to get rid of this awful stretching and, and actually put some nice um, texture in there instead of it. So that will be in the next part. Okay, so we're at the next stage where we're looking to um, basically use these smart UVs and um, and replace this stretching. So how it works is like this. Let's start with the top. And we've got these, like a bit of stretching going on here and a bit of stretching going on here and, and here and here and here. So what we can do is let's just start off by doing one for now. Uh, with the faces selected, we can click on one, click on the other, click on the other, and click on the other. So we've got all those selected. Then we'll go right click, and then we'll go to Smart UV Project. Okay, click on that. It'll bring up a box. Just click OK. Now what it'll do here is once we go through to the UV editing, it will present us now with the um, our model here, which you can see but it doesn't have any um, texture on it um, right now because we haven't got enough space to, there we go. So if we just click on uh, one of these now, we can see the actual image. That's better actually, get it in that mode. And then uh, once we've done that, we can go through to the top, uh, top window sill and you'll see there now what it's done is it's projected on the entire photograph so if i just minimize that a little bit zoom out a little bit you'll see it's taken that uv and it's just gone done the whole thing 
But because we want this to kind of be fairly blank, all we need to do is really just choose a part of this picture which we, you know, would be more suitable, right? So we're actually using the image over and over and over again to help fill in the kind of textures, if that makes sense. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go and highlight all of that UV, which you can see there. I'm going to hit scale, S for scale, scale that down. You can see it changing now on the right hand side. Just go back and forth. You can see that, right? So you scale all right down. And uh, I'm just going to pick some material. So I would say probably like the white arch is probably going to be the best, right? So I'll go all the way down to say, if I can. I might just need to zoom in a little bit. Hit scale again. S for scale. And then G for grab. And we'll move it over. And hey, presto. A nice, clean um, uh, texture on there. And then we can do the same with all of them. So you don't necessarily have to do them all, um, do them all uh, individually. We can just go and select. So I can sort of show you this now in real time. So let's go shift and select. And then just shift and select these. And let's do the other ones. We'll try and do them all in one hit. OK, so we've got all of our window sills uh, selected. And then we can go right click, UV unwrap faces, and then smart UV project. Click on that. Click OK in the box. And now you can see there in real time, it plonks it all on there, right? So again, what we can do is we can just scale this down. Now, doing it on mass like this um, can present some issues. For example, the quality of the image. So obviously, the smaller you get, the more pixelated it may become. So you might want to do it individually, depending on what you're doing. Or for something like this, where it's a kind of street scene, we're not going to be seeing things in great detail. So it's not necessarily something to kind of worry about. So let's bring these down to, say, right about there. G for grab. Let's go zoom in a little bit. Scale this down a little bit more. OK. And then, hey, presto. We've got nice, clean textures on there and no stretching. Pretty cool, huh? All right, and then we can do the same with the rest of it. So there, there's some other little bits that we can have a look at. So say, for example, we've got this thing going on with the with the tree kind of coming in there. It's not it's not a big deal really for you know for an exercise like this, but it might be a big deal if you if you wanted to kind of use this method to kind of create a street scene so maybe we can have a look at this and we can see this this next set isn't kind of affected by that so we can maybe do the same thing with this and then move that set of uvs over to here all right so let's have a go at doing that so i'm going to go and select these shift select like so yeah so same thing again uv on wrap faces smart uv project Click OK, and then we've got our UVs there. Then all we need to do is select them. Scale, S for scale, scale that down. And then G for grab, we can move it over. And you can see there now it covers it nicely. Yeah. So say so something like that. It's all pretty, pretty much. And I'm not seeing a great amount of difference there, which is pretty cool if I just uh, have a look. You know, color um, the coloration. So that's pretty good. We've got this problem with the bench. So you can see there now the bench is kind of getting in the way, right? So if I just bring move myself over a little bit and move this over a little bit just so you can see it. So that's a bit of a problem, right? You know, we've kind of got the bench kind of stripping, and you know, it just looks all a bit messy and a bit stretchy and a bit horrible. So let's uh, take care of that. Again, we've got this kind of, might be tempted just to use quite possibly the green. Um, it's not in the most tiles, right? So it might be an idea to sort of use a bit of the, the green from the building. So let's go and select, um, I'll tell you what, I might just drop another edge loop in there. So I can see just the bottom of the windowsill just so we don't sort of select that. 
going to go to the faces. Now let's go and select that face. Shift, shift, shift. We'll do the, the whole thing. We'll do that, do that, do that, and that. Okay. So we've got that covered. And then all we need to do is right click. Same thing again, right? Smart UV project. Click OK. Then we've got that. Then all we need to do again is just shrink that down. So a lot of this is just like rinse, repeat, S, shrink that down, and then move that uh, in G, and then we can just use that same bit again, maybe, something like that. Yeah, something like that. So again, you know, it works, right? You know, you've got that kind of, you'd never know really, unless you kind of get really, you know, scrutinize it. Okay, and then we've got these side bits. So the same same thing applies with these. You know, you can have a look at the sides. Um, let's go and select, say, these. Um, it might be tempting to even, could we do that maybe? I'm just tempted to maybe even use part of that, but um, we can move it over. Okay, so what I'll do here is I'm gonna go, Get rid of that. Um, we will select that. Let's try this and see if it works. We'll select all of these, all these bits of stretching and whatnot. And then we'll go right click, unwrap faces, and smart UV project. Click OK. And then we've got them selected there. Highlight them all. And what I'm going to do here is because it's kind of like a dark color, I'm going to see if I can get away with. Oh, we've missed one there. Let's just go back a second. Let's try that again. Hit S, scale these down. Oops. What I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can try and put these, fit these into, say, somewhere like here. So you just got the general overall dark color. So you can't really tell. What does that look like? That's looking all right. And we've got this other bit as well. This is actually from the photograph. I mean, if it if it bothers you, we could just do a smart UV projection on that. Just zoom out a little bit. Just so it's just black and not um, doesn't have any kind of noise. So again, but uh, it's pretty cool though, eh? I mean, you know, doing being able to kind of create. Um, a sort of, you know, buildings just using photographs. I mean, you, you could also, I mean, don't think about necessarily about photographs. You could photo bash something. You could even use your own artwork. How about that? You could actually design it and then model from it. So you could actually have your own drawing style, your own paintings, concept paintings, and then model them as opposed to, you know, uh, trying to model it, say, you know, using Maya or Blender or, you know, um, uh, Substance Painter or 3D Coat to kind of achieve that, you know, 3D form. You could just draw it, make a plane, put it into Blender. And, uh, you know, Bob's your uncle. So we've got that sorted. So that's all looking all right. We've got a, this kind of horrible stretching here on the windowsill. So let's have a look at that. So like that. Like so, and again, UV on right faces, smart UV project, click OK. And then we'll just highlight them. Now, that's probably going to be like, I'll use this white again, I think. So scale that down. And we'll move that over. And I think what we'll do is just rotate that as well. Let's try that again. Okay. It's not rotated for some reason. Uh, let's just do it. Do it by uh, clicking R. Let's do that. Nice and simple. Okay. And G, and then move that into place. And you'd never know, right? Got this other part of the street here with this part of the bench. So again, if you wanted to, we could just take that and say, um, use the 
shift and uh, select. Okay, I think that's about right. Maybe again, maybe, maybe that. We've got a shadow casting there, so maybe we could, and just mirror this maybe. So we've got that, right click, Smart UV Project, click OK. And what we'll do is we'll just take this, scale it down. And then maybe rotate it. And then G for grab and move that over onto the pavement area. Again, this might you might need to kind of take a bit of time with this. I mean, if need be, we can sort of do. Let's have a look here. Use the scale tool, but do it that way. So use the controllers and scale it that way, and just see what you end up with, really. Um, Again, it's not going to be perfect, but it's not meant to be perfect, yeah. So something like that. We're going to have, if you saw from the previous video, um, we've got this kind of road coming down here anyway. So um, a lot of that's going to be covered. But um, okay, so I think that's looking all right. And again, you can kind of go along and sort of tweak it, um, add more bits in if you so wish. Um, I would say get all the lines in there first if you can. In terms of like putting the loop cups in there, so you you know you've got your um, you know things like the windows, the sash windows. You don't want to be necessarily doing it afterwards because it might throw some complications up. Um, we've got some stuff at the side here, um, which isn't actually looking too bad. But any anywhere where you see a bit of stretching, I would uh, certainly have a look at that. Once you've done that, then you're ready for the uh, the next phase, which is uh, putting it uh, really into more of a scene and putting some lighting in there. So that's going to be in the next video. So we've got our um, UV sorted now using the Smart UV Project. Uh, Really now, we're just going to start sort of creating like a bit of a scene now. You could work on multiple photographs, of course, and start creating different buildings. Um, I'm just going to use this same building um, to make a, just a sort of corner. So I'm just going to press Shift and D. And then uh, what I'm going to do is just move that to, to one side there and then just go and rotate. So I'm just going to go into the um, – just get that into position first. So move that up so it's kind of level. And then if we just go to the top and then use the rotate on that and just rotate that around like so. And then just maneuver it. So the aim was to kind of maybe just put this in the corner somewhere like that. Yeah. That's looking all right. Now we've not got a roof on there, but you know, you can sort of, again, the same principles apply though. So you can put a roof on there. And um, yeah, just continue continue on with it, really. So we've got that. Um, we've got our little scene. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just uh, just for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to go and add add a mesh. Let's say we'll add a um, cube, just to kind of make it look a bit more complete. But again, you can you can sort of take your time. Take your time on this. Okay, so got a little roof on there, and uh, let's start putting some uh, lights in here now. So what we're going to do is we're going to start building the scene. So I'm going to go to Add, and going to go to Light, and it's going to add in some point lights. Just change over to the uh, viewport shading, so we get a bit more of a accurate reading.
At the moment, that's quite low. So I'm going to change that up to say around about, say, let's try 200. It's quite fine. And then what we can do is we can just uh, hit Shift and D and uh, copy. And then just move it along like so. We can have like a general over, you know, a kind of um, general kind of ambient light. We'll put that above, maybe. It's like it's almost like it's coming from a street light or something like that. You can increase the strength of this as well a little bit. So, or something like that. Increase it to maybe try 400. So like that, and of course, you know, you can maybe make this a bit more orangey, like it's sort of street light. Something like that. And of course, you can do the same on the other side as well with these lights. Just copy some of these lights again, Shift and D. And maybe, like, you know, to give it a bit more realism, you know, you're not going to have every single light on, right? If people are living in flats uh, in, you know, in these buildings, you know, perhaps not everyone's going to be home. Yeah, someone might be out, might be doing other things, might be working, they might be eating at a restaurant. You can add some more kind of atmospheric lights to this, so maybe I'll just copy that. Yeah, there might be light bouncing from other buildings, right? So depending on what it is, there might be like uh, neon signs, maybe. It could be anything, really. But again, it's, uh, so you'll have different kind of noises going on. So that's starting to really shape up, isn't it? You know, um, we can take that. Maybe even have something there. And perhaps not have like white light, you know, maybe have again kind of more yellowy light. It just gives it a bit more realism. If you've managed to kind of do this, then pretty much that's it. Uh, there's things like the road we can put in there. So if you wanted to, you can maybe um, add a. Um, uh, a plane in there so you could get a plane in there so this could act as like a bit of um let's scale this up a little bit so again this could add as let's put it on a bit of an angle so imagine this on like a bit of a slope maybe something like that yeah and then you could add some uh subdivisions I just well, one of the things I've not done actually before we do that on the building. If we go back to edit mode, I think we're going to try and add some steps. So let me just uh, move this down a little bit. Let's go back to our building. Go back to edit mode. Yeah, let's have a look at uh, maybe just extending this out a little bit. So we'll go and select the faces. Um, something like... Or maybe just try this, actually. Try bringing these forward like so. These as well. 
Okay. And then we'll extrude them out like so. And then what we'll do is we'll just continue then. So we'll extrude this next line out, E, extrude them. And then we'll have the last lot. We'll just extrude that. E, and then we'll extrude that like so. Do the same with this. Okay. Let's see what, how that affects the plane. So let's just go back into object mode. We'll click on the plane. Let's see where, what happens when we do that and bring it up. Okay. Something like that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that could work, I think. We're getting most of the, as long as it's catching, yeah, so it's catching that building. So it's a bit of a slope. I can see there's a little bit of a gap there at the bottom. I think there's a gap anyway. Or maybe not. No, I think that looks all right. So we've got like, it's a bit more natural. You know, we've got a bit of a slope going on down there. And if you wanted to, you could uh, do some subdivisions. So with this, I'm going to edit mode and we can click on the little loop cut tool and uh, just start dropping some, um, some cuts in there. So maybe like something like that. On there. On there. On there. And this is just basically just to kind of make it make the surface a bit more uneven. Yeah, we don't want it to look totally flat, right? Because the world isn't like that. The world isn't full of straight lines. Even, you know, with buildings, you know, the kind of with roads and things like that, you get irregularities, right? So, so again, what we can do is we've got something like that and uh, go to the vertex mode. Come out of that tool now in vertex mode, and then you could just sort of just play around, just dip parts of it down, bring parts of it up, not too much. Just bumps and stuff in the road. Yeah, just to make it look a bit more. Well, we're not really sort of seeing there, but you know, if you were to kind of see, if you were to do like say a render out from, you know, I don't know, you're going to pick a sort of an area. You probably need like a bigger area anyway, and more buildings, of course, you know. But but just give you an idea. And then, um, if you wanted to, you could drop a um, drop a texture on there, just ad hoc. So we're already in material properties. We can kind of go new. It'll bring up another little set of uh, parameters there. And where it says base color, we could click on that. Now I've got a, uh, some tarmac already. I can make this available for you. Just click on that little symbol there and just go to image texture. And then if we go to this little folder here and go open, and I think I've got it on the desktop somewhere, so just bear with me. It's asphalt, there we go. I'm gonna click on that, move myself over all that way. And click open you can see that it's laid it in there now so before we get uh, to the next part with the atmospherics i just realized we needed to extrude uh, one of these surfaces so i'm just going to take care of that now so it's not entirely necessary if you've not done it but uh, in the original model this is what i did so i'm just going to go to the faces and go and select this select this select this go all the way around Do the same on the other side. And that's got it all. And then just hit E to extrude. And we're just going to extrude this out just a little bit, not a lot. And hopefully we're not gonna get much stretching going on there. A 
but that looks all right. Excellent. Okay, go back to the object mode. All right, so let's have a go at um, creating our atmospherics. So in order to do this, I'm going to uh, go to add and add a cube. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit S and extrude this out. It needs to cover the entire um, scene. So something like that. I think that should be enough. Maybe a little bit more. Again, you can sort of position a little bit more. If you want to kind of like be a bit more precise with it, you can maybe even look on wireframe and do it that way. But it's not entirely necessary. Or something like that. Okay. And then take it back out of wireframe. Right. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to select the cube. I'm going to go to the uh, materials properties i'm going to go new to create a new material but this time what we're going to do is where it says surface we're going to click on where it says principled bsdf we're going to click on that and make it so it goes on to volume scatter instead and we won't see any changes at the minute because we haven't um, gone into the script so we're going to go into shading and you'll see there now if i move myself out of the way it's set up to go onto the surface, and what we want is volume. So all I'm going to do is click from where it says volume to volume, and then where it says surface, I'm going to click off that to there. Make sure that you're in the, um, uh, the viewport shading. Now you may not see anything at the moment, it might be a little bit dim, so this is where we need to, where it says density here, click and hold and just very, very carefully bring that out, and you'll see there now. Look at that. Pretty cool, huh? We've got fog. Yeah. Let's go and have a look at the uh, in the layout view. So now we've got this like lovely kind of like atmospheric, misty kind of a scene with our uh, you know on our street, and the lights are kind of really shining you know um, very very nicely. You know, it's supposed to be simulating kind of like you know a window light, but you know from afar it kind of looks okay you'll see on the right here that uh, we can also play around if you if you don't see it already you'll just need to go into where it says volume click on the little arrow there you can play around with some of these things as well like the color I pretty much I'd leave the color as it is if, if I were you but you can change some of this around so if you want to kind of make it a bit more blue or greeny or pinky or whatever but I'd probably keep it sort of neutral uh, depending on what you what you're after and also we've got things like density as well so you can kind of play around with that obviously this takes a bit of uh, you know with a mouse it's a little bit tricky so you might want to that's at what uh, 2.0 um so you might want to let's maybe make that one let's try that at one maybe not one let's try that at uh, <laughs> sorry point one i meant to put point one Something like that, and uh, you know, continue from there. Really, uh, the uh, anisotropy is basically it's kind of like it makes the kind of uh, lights more kind of diffuse as you go along, so you kind of got more of a kind of bleeding and a more diffuse kind of uh, feel about it. But again, it depends what you're after. But that is pretty much it, folks. So hopefully you've found this uh, really useful for what uh, what you're planning on doing. And uh, the applications for this are, um, you know, really unlimited. You know, you could take photographs. As I said before, not only your um, not only your uh, um, uh, photographs that you could use, but you could also use your own artwork. You know, design your own uh, buildings and then model from them. So, you, you know, you hopefully you'll be able, to, be able to kind of, you know, start getting an idea of like where you could go with this. Anyway, that's it really. So hopefully you found this useful. And um, yeah, until next time, folks, I'll see you in the next video.